If you've ever built a new home, you know the construction process involves multiple professions and trades, adherence to building codes, an assortment of products from many manufacturers purchased through a variety of suppliers, an incredible number of decisions, and often lots of money. The same can be said of the process to build non-residential buildings. The difference? Most non-residential buildings involve even more professions and trades, even more codes and regulations, even more products, even more suppliers, even more decisions, and a whole lot more money. Describing how buildings get built is a bit like describing how laws get made in the United States. One can make general statements about how the process works, but there are lots of ways the process can differ depending on the project, its location, the people and organizations who have a say in the decisions, the organizations who are responsible for doing the work, and the financial considerations. Nevertheless, understanding the basic process is a place to start. One traditional and common approach in the building construction process is commonly referred to as design, bid, build. Let's examine how the design, bid, build process works using the example of the construction of a new elementary school. The process begins with a need for a new building. The owner, school district officials, determine they have a need and the funding for a new elementary school. Next, the school district selects an architectural firm and the design process begins. The district will pay that firm to design the school and to oversee the design decisions throughout the construction process. The architectural firm may bring together other construction experts such as civil engineers, structural engineers, and consultants to assist in the design. The design team creates the drawings and the specifications that together form a contract and provide the details necessary to construct the building. As to specifications, the Construction Specifications Institute, known as CSI, has created a master format for construction specification documents. Master format consists of 50 divisions, each addressing a category of products and work used in construction. For example, Division 8 is the division for openings, where one finds the requirements for doors and door hardware. Division 28 is for electronic safety and security, where one finds the access control and other security requirements. Some specifications are written to describe the performance, requirements of the materials and construction elements, while other specifications are very proprietary in that they indicate the exact products and manufacturers required. Specifications can also be written using reference standards or be descriptive, which means they give a detailed written description of the required properties of a product or material. Often a specification is a mix of these various methods of specification writing. For example, a specification could list several manufacturers and product model numbers, while also describing the product features required, making the specification both proprietary and descriptive. Architectural firms commonly use consultants to assist in writing parts of the specification where the architectural firm doesn't have the expertise or resources on staff. Architectural hardware consultants such as Allegiant staff of specification writers often write Division 8 specifications using their expertise to determine the products that will best serve the owner's needs, while also meeting fire and life safety codes. Once the drawings and specifications are complete, documents are issued to obtain bids in the new school. This is known as the bid stage. Construction companies, often called general contractors or construction management firms, prepare their bids. To do so, along with estimating their project management, equipment, and labor costs, these firms seek bids from material and labor suppliers. For Division 8, contract hardware distributors will submit their bids, an informed estimate of the cost of the doors, frames, and door hardware, and sometimes their installation as well based on the plans and specifications. Once the school district awards the project to a construction company, the build stage can begin. The construction company in turn awards the contracts for the materials and labor they need to secure. Once a contract hardware distributor, as a subcontractor, gets awarded the job, this distributor details the job, identifying the exact products for every opening on the job. The distributor will order these materials from the door and hardware manufacturers, timing the materials arrival to the project schedule. For door and door hardware professionals, it is important to note that door frames are usually needed at a job site early in the construction process, as they are part of the building's structural systems. Doors and door hardware are needed on the job site when the construction company needs to secure the building or areas of the building, or as sections of the building are nearing completion. By the way, while doors, frames, and door hardware play an important role in how well a building functions, they typically account for less than 2% of the construction costs. 
The build phase is complete when the construction company turns over the building to the school district, meeting all of the requirements for occupancy as defined by the building codes and officials, and meeting the contractual obligations defined in the agreement between the school district and the construction company. To watch more videos, visit our training page at www.allegion.com/us.